to our drill a day training series. We're on week eight, day number six. We have been just pumping through it, cranking through. This week, we have been focusing on our flow and our endurance, building through a drill that we call Carenza. So for today, here's what you're gonna need. Make sure to grab a training staff. All right, before we get started training, do me a quick favor here real fast. Make sure, number one, that you're subscribed to the channel. If that button has not been clicked, click it right now. Smash that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment below. Also, head over to colliecenter.com and check out our training materials that we have over there. Our Collie Apex training course is the best. It is the best training course. Jump into our coaching membership. It's hosted on our Patreon page. You can get one-on-one -on -one video coaching with your Collie Center coaches, plus you get exclusive weekly training and tactics, techniques, attribute advancement to help to continue your attribute development. And we have a whole bunch of exclusive training videos right there in our Collie Apex. Go check it out. Click the link below, grab your staff, and let's train today's drill. Before we get moving today, I have a question that I want to kind of tackle out. I get this question a lot. It's probably the most common question I get on the staff relating to uh, to Kali, to Filipino martial arts. And the question is, hey Paul, what length staff do you use? And what length staff should I use in my Kali practice? The answer is very complex and it's very simple all at the same time. Whatever length that you want, whatever length works for you. So I have a staff here that's like six feet. My training spear is like seven feet. I have a staff here that is five feet. Goes up to like roughly around my ear. I also have a staff here that is about plexus height. This would be like the short spear or the shorter staff or the two-handed method or anything like that. All of this falls under the category of area seven. So don't be so hung up on what length staff or anything like that to where it's gonna stop you from training. The gear is not the important thing when it comes to your training. The physical training is the important thing. So if you have a staff that's a little long, or you have a staff that's a little short, or you have a staff that you're not too sure about, train with it anyways. If it's long, you can always cut it down. If it's short, it's fine. And you can always get another one that's longer. <laughs> so don't be too picky on the length. You should be training with different lengths and experimenting with them. You know, you, you never know. You never know what you need, you know, what, what you, is available to you and, uh, and what you got. So don't be too picky with it. I typically train with these two staves at least throughout the drill a day. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to use the shorter one. And uh, let's go and rock and roll. So this week we've been focusing on our Carenza flow and we're doing it in a way where we have perpetual movement for a sustained amount of time and we're intervaling between different uh, intensity levels. And the importance of that is we wanna keep the weapon moving the entire time, the entire duration of the training for as much as we can. Now, if you have to stop and take a break, get a drink of water, catch your breath, if you absolutely have to stop, then obviously do that and take care of your survival needs. But the goal is to uh, have perpetual movement throughout the entire training session or multiple sessions if you have to time block it a little bit more. So again, what are we focusing on? The Carenza, this is the shadow boxing of the weapon. right? The uh, ability to kind of free flow with the weapon. Now you can work your double end staff fighting methods, okay? You can change the grips into the two palm down, one palm up, one palm down with the right hand dominant and the left hand dominant. So you can change your, uh, your leads on that. You can also work out on the single end fighting method as well. Okay. All of this translates, the staff, the spear, even the oar. All of this is categorized in Kali area number seven. So what you're, when you're training with the staff, even the double end method, you can still obviously use a double end method on a spear, okay? Or the single end method from the spear, you can obviously use that on the blunt or the impact weapon of the staff, okay? Or of the oar. Cracking you know, someone upside the head with the paddle end of an oar 
it's 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 kind of effective. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you need to head back to the week in our drill a day series, I'll put a link right up here to our playlist for the drill a day series, and head back to the staff week. That way, if you need a refresher of different techniques and how to kind of put things together, you can kind of go through those videos real quick, and then you have a good refresher for your Carenza, for your Saya today, right? So throughout the training today, what I want to make sure that we do is interval between those intensities that we've been doing all week. We have that high intensity okay, where we can be you know, going about 70 to 100%, just bop, bop, right? Just really moving, give it everything you got. And then as you're getting tired, as your form, your technique is starting to collapse, I want you to pull the intensity back to like a Tai Chi style. And focus on just keeping it flu fluid and focus on the seamlessness in transition from movement to movement. Okay, change different directions. We're not being too crazy picky on the footwork right now on this week, but I want you to kind of play around with the ability or the mind of changing your directions. Okay? Kind of have fun with it and just experiment with it and then you can pick it up and vary that level of intensity. So for the training today, we're looking to achieve a minimum of 30 minutes of consecutive movement. That's really what we're looking to achieve. Now, if you do not have the endurance yet to continue to move for 30 straight minutes intervaling between the Tai Chi method and the full intensity method. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. You can block them out into two 15 minute segments. Even if that is too much, you don't have the stamina for that yet, then block it out into three 10 minute segments. Okay, now remember, 30 minutes is the minimal that we're trying to go for. So if you end up going for 40 minutes or 60 minutes, that's even better. If you end up, I can only go for 10 minutes in the morning but then you're like, I get this extra wind and I can do 20 minute, a 20 minute session in the evening, you got your 30 minutes in. Okay, so it doesn't have to be this perfect, you know, 30 or 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, right? You gotta kind of figure out what your energy level is and uh, what kind of stamina that you have. The important thing here is that we are really aiming towards the goal of perpetual movement. And even really ideally, if you wanna just kind of train take your time with it and just keep moving for 30 minutes, okay, at a low intensity, but a steadiness, that is actually fine too, that's acceptable too, okay, you don't have to go full blast like 100%. You can even change the intervals of your intensity level if you just want to work between, you know, your Tai Chi style, which is just very slow, very smooth, very thought out, so you can think about the movements as you're going through transitions and then interval that with like 50%, right? Like that's totally fine, okay? And then you can do a little, a little blast and then come back down. But the main thing is, the whole point is just to keep it moving. You know, just keep the perpetual movement. That's really the main, the main thing. And achieve that 30 minutes. If you wanna play with any fancy spins, you can do that. Good for coordination development, okay? And that's the training for today. So staff, spear, mix it up between some staff movements and some of the spear movements, okay? So you can have a lot of fun, just play around with it. Be creative, be self-expressive in today's training. So this week, because we're focusing on Carenza, there really isn't a whole much of like instruction. It's really about a week giving you time to just explore, explore the different areas of Kali, explore the weaponry, explore your own creative expressiveness with the weaponry, find your own style, okay, find how you move, how you make the techniques work. Okay? That's really important to do, you know, as we're building that little bit of individuality into our training. At the same time, we're able to start building up that attribute of endurance.
Okay, let's go ahead and get today done. Once you have completed your 30 minutes of training today, make sure to come back here. Tell me done, finished, complete in the comments below. Again, go ahead and smash that uh, thumbs up button. Give it a little thrust. Let's see how good your, your accuracy is. Give that thumbs up button a thrust. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Share the drill a day challenge with all of your friends out there. Let's get everybody training some Kali together. Okay, whether your friends are martial artists or not, just share it to them, okay? Even if they don't do it, share it. And just keep sharing it to them every single day, right? You just gotta be repetitive on it. And uh, before you know it, some of your friends are gonna get interested in training, and then you might actually be able to have a couple training partners that are uh, in your area, and you can start working out some of the different drills together, especially some of the partner drills and everything. Don't forget to go back through the entire channel because we have almost 700 videos here, a lot of partner drills, a lot of solo training drills that go beyond just our drill a day training series. So share it out, see if you can get some friends involved so we get some training partners and all that stuff. I know Kali is a hard thing to find schools and teachers in a lot of areas. So maybe you can get a little, uh, a little training group together or something like that and uh, just have some fun. All right guys, get outside and make nature your training dojo. It's always a good idea. It always feels good to get that sun, get that vitamin D. It's very important. It's gonna help energize you and it's gonna make your Kali that much better. And I'll catch you back here tomorrow for week eight. Oh my gosh, it's day seven of week eight. It's the end of week eight already. All right, have fun and I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>